Got set for football at Century Link Field here in Seattle. A few moments ago, they raised the 12th man banner, and this place, as usual, rocking and rolling. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel, and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football, so are we, as the Seahawks get set to match up with Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, it's Howard. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. No surprise there, Jadevian Clowney with a tackle for loss. We all know how he became one of the most famous players in football, though, don't we? Oh, that one play. Yeah, that one big-time play. It was on highlights everywhere. They want to see more of that here in the NFL. And he connects with Ertz. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. A big pickup there for the Eagles' first down, 18 yards. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Wentz now on first down. Going to throw right side here, complete. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. Well, the obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, yeah, bro. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. The first down line at the 34 here on third down. Shotgun now for Wentz. Over the middle complete. It's Ward. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 30. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. you still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Set the tone, defense. Set the tone, defense. From the gun, it's Wins. Man open, it's J.J. Ortega-Whiteside. And he lost the football, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Football going back to the Eagles. And, Charles, this Eagles team and the Cowboys, what an interesting NFC East race this turned out to be this season. A lot of people thought it would be these two teams neck and neck. Well, they were right, but they thought the records would be a touch better. But if you keep it germane to the Eagles, what has gone right, what has gone wrong this year for them? Well, what's gone right is that they have a good culture that they battle because this season could have gone totally south for Philadelphia because they had a number of injuries, they went through some losing stretches, and the whole thing could have gotten away from them, but they hung in there and battled all the way to the end. What went wrong? Receivers. 
By the end of the season, they were playing with guys that were bringing up from the practice squad, signing off of other teams' practice squads. None of the starters that were expected to be their frontline guys were available down the stretch for Philadelphia and their quarterback, Carson Wentz. 14 yards there and an eagle first down. They will run for the first time with Miles Sanders. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Defense simply not fooled by the draw there. Well, they were thinking run to begin with, and what they tell their defensive linemen is, play the run on your way to the quarterback. If someone shows, go get him, and that's exactly what they did. I'm coming out to you. I'm coming out to you. Looking to throw on second down. Wentz, oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. From 13 yards out, as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Yeah, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Seahawks back out of the field here, getting set for their next drive. You know, this is a team that, great record this year, double digits and wins again, but they have played a lot of close games in 2019, haven't they? They think it's character building, and they think it's going to serve them well come the cauldron of the playoffs. That when you play those intense games, those close games, they've been there before. Look at them. They beat the Steelers by two. They beat the Bengals by one on opening day. How about the game against the Browns? Just by four against them on the road. A field goal better than the Niners in overtime. So they've been there. They understand it. There's an author named Angela Duckworth who wrote a book called Grit a few years ago. Pete Carroll, the head coach, really bought into that and that idea of having a gritty, tough team. And we've seen evidence of it in 2019. That's a great point, though. Come playoff time, if it's a one-score game down the stretch, they're not going to be daunted. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Throwing on second down. Wilson stepping up. He's going to keep it. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. From the shotgun, Wilson. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Here comes the pressure, and the Eagles get there to block it. Look at this, middle of the field, a breakaway. And he'll score. Let's Touchdown, go, touch Eagles. In for the score. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. 
Partners, you well know every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Elliott good on the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Now it's Wilson, and it's incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. They go play action with Wilson. He can run for it, and he will. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On the carry, here's Marshawn Lynch. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 34. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. They'll run with Marshawn Lynch. And credit the tackle to Derek Barnett. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. What? Didn't happen on that play. Get that quarterback, D-Line. Get that quarterback, D-Line. D-Line, get... They'll run this with Homer. 
He'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play, as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Here's Wilson to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 22. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. After one, a 14 to three ball game. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now Howard. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. The Eagles on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This time they face a third and two. Caught by the tight end Ertz. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 14 yards there and an Eagle first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages... When they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Give credit to K.J. Wright. He was disrupting defensively. C.D., with that incompletion, let's talk AFC playoff picture. I think you and I agree that if you put together any sort of power rankings, we'd put Baltimore number one, certainly in the AFC. But you look ahead to the playoffs getting started on January 4th. Who do you see as their main competitor for that Lamar Hunt trophy? Well, tradition and us not wanting to be wrong dictates that we say New England next, and rightly so because of the number of Lombardi trophies they've won, how they've always played at this time of year. But the bottom line to me is the prime contenders right now for Baltimore, Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes has gotten together and the defense is playing better. And Buffalo really showed me something when they beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh on a Sunday night in week 15. To throw, it's Wentz. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Ward. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 42. Hey, Wentz.
offense now getting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. Working from the gun. Wentz completes it to Aguilar. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Wentz off the fake handoff to Howard. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and the Seahawks have picked it up. It's celebrating, and off he goes. And they bring this one back. It's a fumble yeah, recovery and a yeah, Seattle we, touchdown. We got it. We got it. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower postgame. Myers connects on the PAT. And that makes it a 14-10 ball game. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Fielded about a yard deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. They'll be looking to make amends for the events of a moment ago. A fumble return for six points. You absolutely have to protect the football. That's got to be priority number one because margin for error is starting to slip away. And now it's down to a one-score game. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. They start on the ground here at Sanders. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 14 yards there and an Eagle first down. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. Wentz now on first down. Over the middle complete. It's Ward. And he'll get it out a couple yards it. shy of midfield at the 48. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Throwing again on second down. Wentz. Blitz coming and down he goes. With a sack at Ziggy Ansah. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man. And each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other. And they just locked people down. Throwing his Wentz. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he gets this to the 48, but no further. Well short of the line to gain. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. 
The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. To throw again on second down, Wilson. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Brandon Graham applied the heat off the edge. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. On third down, Wilson. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Help me out, partner. Did they use up all their juice on second down when they got the sack? Because on third down, zero pressure. All the time in the world. And he picks up the first down with that throw. Now Wilson on first down. Looking left sideline incomplete. David Moore, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Well, with that incompletion, you know, Charles, one of the big storylines in the final few weeks of the season lies in the AFC South. Tennessee and Houston battling back and forth. Houston won round one, week 15, a victory in Nashville. But which of those two teams do you think has the potential to go deeper in the playoffs? Well, Tennessee just lost at home to Houston. And now we'll have to go on the road to play them again in week 17. So I would say on the surface, you would think Houston. They have the quarterback as well in Deshaun Watson that scares everyone. But I'm picking Tennessee as the team that could go deeper because of their defense. That's really a top five defense on any given Sunday. Their ability to rush the passer, their ability to play the ball in the air. I like that Tennessee team. And I think Ryan Tannehill, the switch to him at quarterback has really energized that club. He may try and run for this. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. Now here's Michael Dixon on for his second punt, and remember, his first one was blocked. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. On second down now, it's Howard. And this will be a pickup of four here, up to their own 20. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Eagles on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and ten. Wentz now to throw. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an Eagle first down. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Rush in, rush in. 
And this is going to be incomplete. Well, let's get back to the playoff picture. We talked about the AFC. Let's look at the NFC. Still, that race starting to come into focus. We know most of the teams, Seahawks, 49ers, Saints, and Packers all in. Vikings in good shape. How do you handicap this race? It seems like anyone can beat anyone. I think you're spot on because if you were going into the playoffs with these teams that we're going to talk about, who would you make the absolute favorite? Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Jaron Reed muscles his way in for the sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great oh, job defensively. Wait. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Eagles coming up here on a third and long, so Wentz and company with some work to do after the sack. He rifles one that's intercepted. Trey Flowers picks it. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. How about that for a little jolt right before intermission? I'm talking about taking momentum into the half with you, and so many teams have an emphasis on trying to score in the last two minutes of a half to carry that with them. It's not often talked about scoring on defense, though. That's extra mo. And now they may take the lead into the locker room as well. Extra point up and through by Myers, and it's now 17-14. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This one fielded at the five. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. to try again after the pick six. Ertz has it left side. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. That throw good for four. It's second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Now Wynn signaling frantically. Let's get to the line. Looking to throw again on second down. Wentz. It's caught by Sanders. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Philadelphia. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. before getting it inside the 35. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Wentz now after the pick on the last drive, three for three to start this drive. It's first and 10. Again, they'll throw with Wentz. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked out and incomplete. 
Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Now a play fake. Wentz. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The linebacker Bobby Wagner able to get back in coverage and knock it free. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Now Wentz on third down. And that's complete to Sanders. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So on comes the Eagle kicker, Jake Elliott, on fourth down. On the left hash, this from 48 yards. And Elliott puts this one through. And that will knock things up here late in the first half. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. Yeah, things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to the goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And out now come the Seahawks. And we're under a minute to go here. What's been an even first half all tied up? Yeah, still time to make something happen, too. A couple completions, you string them together, could get in the field goal range. Let's see what happens. 35 seconds, all that remains in the first half as they come up on first down. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. First down, the run with Lynch. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. A loss of two there, second down. Hey, easy, easy. Tuck, 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 tuck. So nothing separating these two teams as we head to the break all square. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half all tied on the scoreboard. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game, we'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. 
Gotta what? wonder what oh adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan's showing you. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very Check solid three. gain on that play. Check back 47. All day, Going quickly out wide to Moore. And he'll lose yardage here, going down oh, yeah. back at the 28. He lost two there, and it's third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Meanwhile, this one knocked down in the backfield. It's incomplete. So a stop here defensively to start this third quarter. Just what's needed in a tie ball game. Yeah, good chance to build back some momentum on the defensive side of the ball. In fact, what they've done is give their offense a nice push in the back as they get ready to take the field. Now here's Michael Dixon. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. Absolutely love the flexibility of these punters. Their leg drive, able to get it way up in the air, and that allows their punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time. Here we go, here we go. Waiting. What we got, what we got, what we got? Wentz now on first down. He'll have a first down and more past the 20. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. It's a second down run with Sanders. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Aguilar has it. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. A big third Let's down go. conversion with a gain of 28. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. <laughs> Running with Howard. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards no on first down. No Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Again, it's Howard. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. Now wins. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Wentz going to throw. This complete left side to Aguilar. And he's got this down to the 35. 14 yards there and an eagle first down. Here we go, here we go. 180! Watch, watch this 
slant, watch the slant. Watch the slant. Kill, kill, kill. On play action, it's Wentz. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 17 yards and a first down for Philly. Wentz now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. On first and 10, it's Sanders. And he gets it down close to the 10 yard line. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. To throw is Wentz. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. An 11-yard touchdown as his guys are able to regain the lead. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor in effect. Elliott Good with a PAT. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. A nice run on first down gets him six yards to the 31. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll come up now Let's second go, and four up. from the 31. They'll run again with Lynch. And give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They'll run it. Here's Lynch, and he will have a first down here at about the 40. At five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Guys, it's game situation. Let's go. On first down, Wilson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. But it's going to be second down. Well, Charles, while we have a second, you know, we talked about the NFC playoff picture, but I wanted to get your thoughts on a hot topic right now in NFL circles. That's awarding a home game to every division winner, regardless of record. It's happened twice in this decade that we've seen a 7-9 and nine team in Seattle get a home game and a 7-8-1 and one Carolina team get one. Where do you stand on this? Because there's a scenario where you could have a 13-win team from the NFC West 
West traveling to face an eight-win team from the NFC East. I know I'm a dinosaur on this one. Absolutely. I love the division champ getting a home game. I don't care what the record is, and I know it sounds wrong, and we're in this society now where everything has to be fair and right. And we would like that, and I would like that too for most big topics. But in sports, it's actually kind of kind of cool when these things happen. Remember, Seattle at 7-9 and nine hosted the defending Super Bowl champs, New Orleans, and beat them. That big Marshawn Lynch run that we'll remember forever. Carolina 7-8-1, they actually lost at home in their, in their playoff game. So you don't know how it's going to turn. I like division champs winning it and getting a home game even when the records are kind of messed up. I'm with you. You're making me smile. How about that? You and I sitting, on the ho sitting in the home, two old dudes going, that's the way it ought to be. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. He'll keep pounding here with Lynch. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Back to back stops, make it third and 10. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a big time play there. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he'll only get this to about the 35. Well short of the line to gain. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. It'll be spotted on the right. And the holder's going to keep it. He's going to try to run for it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. Well, that was a long attempt to begin with, so the fake you might have known was somewhat of a possibility. Credit to the defense, though. They weren't fooled. You're right. They weren't fooled, and they were in a position of having to play it both ways. Guard for the fake, but you still want to rush the kicker because it was a makeable kick. So they ended up getting the best out of the whole thing. Stuffed the fake, and they take over the ball. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before Let's being go. dropped Let's inside the 40. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that. The nickel look, five cents, five DBs. But what also happens then, you take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little. And oftentimes, you can run the football effectively against that defense. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Nelson Aguilar, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. On second and 10, Wentz. That's taken in by the tight end, Perkins. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 28. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to go down here, a sack. They push him back to the 34. Jaron Reed able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So second and long and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Shotgun now for Wentz. 
Caught by the tight end Ertz. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. And this is going to be no good. He misses it off to the left, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, that one hurts a bit. That was a golden opportunity to possibly put this one on ice, but he comes up empty. And how big of a miss might that turn out to be? Stay tuned. There's still time left on the clock. This could be critical. Still a one-score game. Had he hit that, it would have been two scores. On first and ten, it's Wilson. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Wilson now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Throwing for his running back and he's got him complete. It's a nine yard pickup on the play and that'll make it second and short. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now Lynch. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. From the gun, it's Wilson. Try to drop one in, but it's incomplete. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, and we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags, and I believe this is going to be a first down. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and ten. Following the penalty, Lynch. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Again, they'll pound it with Lynch. And he's got room. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. That gain of 15 gets him on the doorstep first and goal. That's how you get right up off of the mat, because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. They'll run with Lynch. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. On second down, Lynch. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. They'll run here on third and goal. 
No gain on the play that time. So a big stop, and it's going to leave him with a fourth and goal. Nice hit, boy. I know this is your spot, partner, so forgive me for jumping in, but there's no decision right here. They have to go for it in this situation. They're down on the scoreboard. How many other opportunities are you going to get? Yeah, I'm with you. Fourth quarter, like you said, down on the scoreboard. And remember here, a field goal virtually does them no good. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. DK Metcalf there to make the grab as they can now even this game here in the fourth quarter with the extra point fourth and goal and they found a way to throw it in the end zone for a touchdown and these defenses they just like three downs get off the field but here they had to go four couldn't get it done a lot of the time you're looking up and saying okay if i hold them for three at worst i give up a field goal attempt when they go for it sometimes it really affects the defense because maybe they're not mentally prepared to go that fourth down now Myers for the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. Nothing separating these two sides. 24 all our score as he sends this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This Let's will be go, a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. A quick pass out to Aguilar. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Now that was well defended, and as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. Throwing on second and 14. Wentz over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And that takes us from second to third down. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Throwing now is Wentz. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Ward. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A big pickup there for the Eagles' first down, 18 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Now Wentz. Catch is made by Arcega Whiteside. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. A big pickup there for the Eagles' first down, 18 yards. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. 
Wentz on the draw leaves it for Sanders. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. This is Howard on second down. Five yards will get him back to the original line of scrimmage, but now they're looking at third and ten. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, it's wins. And Sanders has got it complete. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 26. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels Michael, routine. Go. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. The linebacker Bobby Wagner able to get back in coverage and knock it free. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Throwing again on second and ten. Wentz, and he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. One of the things you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he get a good head of steam going. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. Wins to throw again. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively. Brings up fourth down. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now, since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. The kick by Elliott is good. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole check, lot check, better check. view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Open man is Jacob Hollister. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had to read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. 
Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and 10. From the shotgun, Wilson. His throw incomplete. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss on one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. <laughs> he definitely wants that one back. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. On the carry, it's Lynch. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. He needed nine, he got eight. And that's gonna leave him with a fourth and one on their side of the field. So on now comes the kicker. It's Jason Myers from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming from the right hash here. Should be an easy one. Myers' kick is good. And we are all tied here in the final stages. So a big kick to get this back to even. Now the worry is, did you leave too much time on the clock? Because another field goal the other way, that does you in. You're exactly right. You didn't get it to overtime yet. So now as a defense, You've got to think to yourself, you can't play prevent defense and just give up big chunks of yardage in front of you, but you also can't let anyone behind you. So you sit right on the line between the two, play the best defense you can, and not make it easy for them to move the ball downfield. Boy, hard to ask for a better game thus far. 27 apiece is our score as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will we be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. Here we go, here we go. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. It'll go as a gain of 25 on a play that started back at the 25. First down now, but that clock rolling. From midfield, here's Wentz. On the crossing route, complete. That's Ward. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. A gain of six there on first. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time, but guess what? They've got to make sure on their throws that they see it open, not just anticipate it. Now Wentz signaling frantically, let's get to the line. Throwing again on second down. Wentz, and that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. But to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. Completes it to Aguilar. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. 
A short gain that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This for the lead in the final stages. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. So it was a golden chance to go ahead here in the final moments, but he misses for a second time in this game. Brandon, either one of those go, and they might be on their way to a victory. Instead, they're going to have to hold on here defensively just to force overtime. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Wilson to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver was DK Metcalf, and now it's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, now third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now Wilson. That's caught by Hollister. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Mike. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here we go, here we go, here we go. A give to Lynch from the shotgun. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's okay, it. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. They'll keep it on the ground. Lynch, and he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go in the game. On third down, they go Lynch. And he's going to get this to the 31, but that is still well short of what he needed. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. You got him. You got him. You got him. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. Two for two on the afternoon, and a third would win it. And his kick is good. And they'll be celebrating in Pioneer Square tonight. The Seahawks have won the game. Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.